don't worry, I'm not going to dance. I'm here to talk about AutoBody. It's an home automation system I built uh, with Python. So it started, oh man, it started when, uh, if I can get this thing here, okay. It doesn't take it. Oh, here. I think this one here is the one, the culprit. I don't see. Uh, these tables are not really, why is it not? You have a paper somewhere? Okay, I'll take this paper. I think it's going to be better. Oh, okay, it was better. Okay, here. Okay, here. All right. That should be better. Okay. So I, I bought in the um, August 2015, I bought some LifeFix Wi-Fi light bulbs and some um, Flick. Flick is a, a small button like this, Bluetooth. You click, you double click. You long click, and um, when I got home and I wanted to put all those things together, I noticed that there was a bit of a problem, is that each has its own application, um, and uh, to use it, you had to have your smartphone there. So if I would leave the house, then my wife could not use this thing, which is a bit of a problem. So um, <clears throat> another thing is that it needed an external server to operate because we could actually connect those things with IFTTT or things like that. But I don't know, it's a, a bit of a problem because you were using, why, why having to use a server that's across the world when my button and my lamp are right here in this room, you know? So uh, on top of that, you lose the internet connection which sometimes happens and then you can't turn on your lights. That's a bit of a problem. On top of that, you know, all those small packets that we use, they consume energy. And if we have to send them across the world, that's a lot of energy. Especially if we have more and more IoT devices and uh, more and more autom home, autom home automation devices. So the Guardian said that by 2025, it's expected to have 20% of the energy used for IoT which is a problem because it means it's only 80% left for blockchain. <laughs> so I started thinking and um, I decided to build my own system. So I, there were a few reasons for that. I wanted to learn Python 3. I hadn't learned Python 3 by then. I was using Python 2.7. Uh, I wanted to learn using AsyncIO and also a lot of Bluetooth things around, so I thought that could be interesting. So, what is a home automation system, I thought? So, in essence, it's a message bus. You have a bunch of devices that generate events, a bunch of devices that handle those events, respond to those events, and then uh, some housekeeping stuff. That's essentially what it is. So, in order to have that bus, we need a number of components, which is a controller. We need a user interface. We need a, a bridge to come between the user interface and the, and the bus, because of course the user interface is, in, is not in Python. And then a rule engine. And then devices and bridge to actually talk to those devices we have. So, I really didn't know what I was getting into when I decided to start building that thing. So, Here's what it looks like now, because after several years, I have a system that's kind of working. I'm using it every day. So you have, um, if I could have a pointer here, uh, I don't know if it's here. Okay, I can't find it. No problem. Top left, the, those light bulbs. These are actually a uh, life fix light bulb. Those here, they're Xiaomi light bulbs. Uh, the, uh, the pale blue buttons, it's uh, life fix. Oh, sorry, flick. Flick button, the small buttons here. Uh, you can see you have presence, you can see you have Wemo, uh, Wemo uh, switches, these are Sonoff switches, these are uh, Wemo motion detection, this is a code instance, active, this is a code instance, not active. You have Ruby tag, which are really nice devices, like these actually, with temperature, humidity, pressure, and uh, accelerometer inside them. And all those, all those now are connected 
and are working together to get this system working. So when developing that, you can also see I have some voice commands uh, right there in the office. Okay, so when I was wor working on those things, I had to develop a number of uh, libraries to get all those things talking to each other. So I, um, I got an insight somehow about what should happen, what should, how should those devices behave when they are connecting, because I have something like this, for example, which is a Stila, which is a very nice device, Bluetooth, accelerometer, but there's no API to it. You can't do anything with it unless you use their application, which is not so good. But I came with the idea that you have, you know, several types of devices on the bus. You know, have those that affect your, the, the real world, like a light. If it turns off and it's night, you're going to hit something. Uh, you have those devices that do not have uh, uh, affect the, uh, the real world. Like if you click this one, okay, you just click this one, that's it. There's no effect by itself. And so I was thinking that whenever you want to, okay, sorry, I, went, I, I, uh, I got ahead of myself here a bit. But anyway, those, those devices, when they come into your, okay, yeah, we need to, okay, quickly then, we need to have something broadcasting when they come into the scene. So broadcast to tell you here, you only connect if you affect the real world and you, use, you should use IPv6. So here, if you want to use it, that's where it is. Thank you very much. 